Kyler Murray suffered a non-contact right knee injury on this play, and in this video, I'm gonna walk you through what exactly I think happened. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Dr. Brian Suter, and if you're new here and enjoy learning about the underlying anatomy and mechanisms of different sports injuries, then please consider subscribing to make sure you're up to date as soon as I release videos. This is definitely concerning for Kyler, and let's walk through what we see. First of all, he's cutting and pivoting, and oftentimes ACL injuries, especially non-contact, are cut and pivot types of injuries. We can see he's running to the right. He's trying to plant with that right foot to pivot and cut, up towards the left side of the field. As he does that, unfortunately, what we see is he lands on number one, a relatively straight right leg out in front of him. His trunk is a little bit lean toward that injured right side. And then as this move sort of continues, we see his tibia, his knee sort of rotate inwards. What we're really seeing is this internal rotation of the shin bone relative to the thigh bone. And then as we run this clip through, you'll actually see how his shin or the tibia in this position is popped a little bit forward and then as his foot comes off the ground, it actually right there snaps back up into place. Now this is very subtle, but this posterior relocation from this position back up, again, what we're looking at is right here, the front of the tibia, that bump, and then it boom, snaps back up, is often something that we see with a non-contact ACL tear. We see the same thing from this initial view. Again, he plants relatively straight leg, trunk is leaned over that affected side, flat foot, and then as this kind of continues, we see that knee rolls inward a little bit relative to the thigh bone. What we get is what we call this knee abduction moment where the distal end of the tibia rotates outward into abduction. And then we see that same thing with the front of his tibia right here, all of a sudden then boom, popping back up posteriorly, relocating after likely the ACL has been injured. And if we look at the anatomy, it makes sense why we see that forward and then backwards translation of the tibia. Of course, the ACL shown here highlighted in yellow runs from the front of the tibia, so this is gonna be the front, to the backside of the femur. What that means is the ACL is preventing the shin bone or the tibia from snapping forward relative to the straight line of the femur. So imagine if you take a pair of scissors, you cut that ACL, now you can grab the shin bone and you can pull it forward past the femur which is what we see with these non-contact ACL tears. This actually mimics one of the tests we do for torn ACL. We pull on the front of the tibia and if it moves and there's no firm endpoint, that suggests an ACL tear. If we look back at the play with the anatomy, again, that front portion of his tibia right here is going to correspond to this bump, that tibial tuberosity where the patellar tendon inserts, maybe a little bit more of the tibial plateau. But then as the weight comes off of his foot, we see that posterior reduction back upwards. One of the best examples of this was wide receiver Jameson Williams when he was at Alabama, same sort of thing. We can see as that knee comes inward right here, this very pronounced portion of the tibia. And then as the weight comes off, we see that posterior reduction. So that movement right there, of course he had an ACL tear. And then of course with Von Miller, we see here again, that tibia protruding forward, that knee coming inward. And then as the weight comes off of the foot, we see the tibia right there pop back posterior. So unfortunately, this type of mechanism, it's ACL until proven otherwise, and you basically have to rule it out. Of course, it's possible to just sprain an ACL where there's a partial tear, or it's maybe just stretched. So hopefully that's all that happened here with Murray, and we're not talking about a full rupture. But again, anytime we see that clear anterior tibial translation with that posterior reduction, you have to rule out the ACL because that's pretty pathognomonic for when we see those types of tears. Of course, also with an ACL tear, we can see bone bruising, MCL, meniscus injuries, and those things often define when surgery takes place and all the details of the surgery. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. I hope this was educational. Hopefully I'm wrong, MRI tells us otherwise, but again, from looking at the mechanism and seeing these things multiple times, that's the number one concern.